Let us take a trip in the old time machine, shall we? Way back to two years ago, 2006. It's pretty clear by now that mission was not accomplished in Iraq. Gas prices were in the middle of a meteoric rise. And the political capital President Bush earned from that mandate for his win over John Kerry in 04 had dissolved into a sad little puddle of then record low approval numbers. To make matters worse, Mr. Bush had been doing battle for months with pesky legal scholars, privacy advocates, members of Congress, and regular carping Americans who have a thing about the Constitution. Those of us who think the warrantless spying program he started at the National Security Agency might not be legal. I authorize the National Security Agency to intercept the international communications of people with known links to al-Qaeda and related terrorist organizations. Okay, sounds reasonable. But what about the average Americans who have no links to al-Qaeda, who could also be caught up in this surveillance program? The privacy of ordinary Americans is fiercely protected in all our activities. We're not mining or trolling through the personal lives of millions of innocent Americans. Our efforts are focused on links to al-Qaeda and their known affiliates. Fast forward to this week. Two intercept operators, the people charged with listening to overseas phone calls, spoke out about what exactly they were intercepting. Type of conversation like personal, private things with Americans who are not in any way, shape or form associated with anything to do with terrorism. I was told, hey, uh, check this out. There's something really, there's some good phone sex or there's some pillow talk. Pull up this, this call. It's really funny. These two interceptors admit to eavesdropping on hundreds of Americans, soldiers, journalists, and aid workers, Americans who were just trying to have private conversations with their families back in the U.S. This is some told-you-so nobody ever wanted to have, right? Basically, the Bush administration has used the Fourth Amendment of the Constitution to line its proverbial kitty litter box. But evidence that the government has been spying on personal calls and passing around phone sex audio is just one of the many scary bombshells in the the new book, The Shadow Factory, which comes out on Tuesday. The author is investigative journalist James Bamford. He's been covering the NSA for 25 years, and he joins us now. Mr. Bamford, many thanks for joining us. Congratulations on the new book. No, thanks, Rachel. I appreciate it. If the point is to gather valuable intelligence on terrorists, isn't it counterproductive to sit around listening to soldiers talk to their wives and girlfriends? Well, that was one of the complaints they had, and I think one of the things that drove them to become whistleblowers was because <clears throat> both of them protested, uh, both internally and uh, uh, Adrian, the, the woman who was doing the intercepting, protested to uh, Senator Leahy on the Intelligence Committee and got nowhere. Nobody even went back to her to ask her about these things. So um, they were very angry that they were eavesdropping on uh, on average Americans instead of going after terrorists, which is what they went into the military to do in the first place. Why were these calls listened to at all? What was the strategy here? Was it, was it a vacuum up everything strategy? Well, that was it. It's a vacuum up everything. And then they had an option of getting rid of the calls that weren't very useful, the calls to journalists, the calls to aid workers, uh, pillow talk uh, uh, between the soldiers and their uh, spouses back in the U.S. Uh, But they were told that they can't eliminate those telephone calls from the uh, incoming mix. They had to keep them there. And so every time a person called their spouse or every time a journalist called his uh, source or called the editor or called his wife uh, or husband, they were called and uh, they they were uh, collected and then transcribed and also stored. The James, NSA is building an enormous facility in Texas to store all these uh, conversations. Do, is it clear to you that this program is illegal? Well, it seems like it's illegal. Uh, the problem is that the Congress changed the Foreign Intelligence Surveillance Act so much it's hard to tell what's legal and what isn't legal. But at the very beginning stages of this, you had the uh, Deputy Attorney General, the Attorney General, the FBI Director, and numerous other officials uh, uh, literally within days of quitting because they thought this program was so illegal. James Bamford, author of the new book, The Shadow Factory, thank you so much for joining us tonight. I have to tell you, I can't put the book down. Thanks, Rachel. I appreciate it.